Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Palm Nui. Uh, are there any apologies? There being none, we move into public forum. We welcome David Yeoman. You've got the floor, my man. Oh, already? Yep. No, I haven't been in the <laughs> 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 We'll just put the siren on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and um, councillors. Um, right. The purpose of this submission is to open a dialogue which I hope will eventuate in uh, a collective discussion with the council on what they're currently proposing, and it's based mainly on Gary's proposal to uh, have a scheduled event. We would like to uh, have some control as to how that proceeds. So I'll refer to the document, which I hope you've all read. Um, so the first recommendation that I would like to go to is that the Tyro Parliamentary Community Board convey to the management Emergency Management Committee that the tsunami siren energy disconnection paper is not acceptable to the title of Parliamentary Community. I'd like to have that registered, please. Okay. Yep. The second part of that is that the Tyro of Parliamentary Community Board undertake to discover the document which approves the proposed tsunami siren energy disconnection program. Rumour has it that it was signed on the 4th, the day before the first um, shakes that we had. Which was like a copy, um, the Tyro Community Board recommends that the TCDC engages with the Coromandel community about sirens with the purpose of asking the communities um, to retain the siren as part of the public alerting system. Just some background. As you know, Facebook has gone ballistic about this subject. Um, there has been a move to ask all the red card communities to subscribe to input uh, through um, their various community boards directed to the TCDC about public engagement. We've had conversations with the mayor in this room where the question was asked, did you talk to the public? The answer is no. Uh, did you consult uh, at any stage with the public? The answer is no. Do you intend to uh, include sirens in any budget? The answer is no. And so this has caused great deal of concern throughout the community. At the moment, uh, we are seeking um, costings from a company based in Auckland who are uh, working with the Auckland City Council on um, providing sirens for a river, uh, which are two units. And those two units um, give an approximate cost of $360,000, and that includes consent. Um, so by this afternoon, I will have costings on both types of units. That are available, and I'm happy. Uh, since, since I've got the technical information, I'm happy to supply it to anybody. Uh, so the community uh, feeling at the moment is one of, um, uh, I would say, despair that no discussion has happened. And we would like to have that discussion. If it requires going through a long-term plan, uh, I would suggest to my other colleagues is that yes, we put it into the long-term plan. It comes part of the long-term plan, no frills, and that it comes as an urgent issue rather than a long time away issue. Uh, so at the moment, uh, let's go to number four, is that uh, the Tyro Parliamentary Community Board recommends to the TCDC that they defer any action. One of the concerns about the community in the community is that um, Gary's proposal
proposal is that it's going to disconnect. And there's no real information about that. We'd like that identified as to what is going to be disconnected. We'd like to have that as public information, uh, simply because um, some of those uh, installations are quite substantial. One of the power uh, I made, made a set of <coughs> steel poles with what I call World War II siren types on top. Uh, there is a technical word for it, but I, I don't have that in my brain at the moment. Um, Uh, the town of uh, Tyro Pauno receives an undertaking from TCDC that will communicate with each Coromandel community and ask and document which community wishes to retain sirens as part of their public alerting system. That's, uh, I think that's a fair request. Uh, it's an interesting issue is that having gone on to this quest to find that the Northland Regional Council have a program, a long-term program, to upgrade their system, which is quite extensive, and they are doing it in a very pedestrian pace, and that's the same with the Auckland City Council. I've been, I spoke to uh, the project manager for Auckland City Council. Um, the Regal one is a test case. Uh, I should just add that. So as this information becomes available, it will be shared with everybody. So all we're asking is for TCDC to talk to the community and see what the feeling is. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you very much. Yes. There's a fair bit of concern out there. I'm certainly very concerned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we all, uh, probably, if I could add that um, the relationship between the emergency management unit uh, in Thames, Gary's group, uh, the TCD, DT and FENS needs to be opened up so that we, you know, we're not, uh, we have a full understanding of what the interrelationship is. True. Thank you. Can I have a move and seconder to... We uh, resolve or we receive right up the public forum. In particular, yeah. we no, can I just say something? Yep. Say something first. Um, I'm going to um, Chief Forrester's meeting on 10th next Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I will certainly be bringing it up with them. Thank you. Right. Um, because our, our regional commander will be there. And he's one of the blessed eight. Can I ask a question, David? David, have you also looked up the um, National Civil Defence um, information, etc.? Have you looked at Yes, we've been. Um, there's, um, currently, we have five of the ratepayer right groups. Yes. Uh, who are all working together. I'm doing, I'm doing the pedestrian background um, research that goes with that. Um, the minister has been contacted. The director of uh, NEMA has been contacted. There's been yeah. Zoom meetings for those folks. Um, and it's, I think it's speculation to uh, identify which community. So let's focus just on the community here. 27 siren sites, who wants to do it, who doesn't want to do it, um, but you've got to ask them first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's absolutely imperative that there is a national warning system and an all clear sign as well? Oh, I absolutely. Um, we, we all, we can't see all the eggs in the uh, same basket mm -hmm. issue. We are looking at a range of alerting systems to the public. The document, the technical document, which was put out by NEMA some time ago, did not say in any circumstances that sirens should be obliterated from the landscape of emergency alerting system. It was uh, part of a system um, as a supporting. 43%, interestingly enough, I found that that. Uh, the 43% is probably uh, an inaccurate figure, but 
that's old systems. So let, moving ahead, we're looking at new systems, new technology. One of the units has a um, blast radius of 1.6 kilometers, which meant if it went off here in Pao Nui, that here in Tai Rua. Um, so that information can be circulated to you. So, <coughs> Seems impossible yes. in this day and age that they haven't got the technology to accomplish that. When you think 80 years ago, since the First World War, in, throughout England, they had sirens with a raid on and they were all clear. And they're here now. Well, it means that the entire peninsula could effectively become siren free. Um, which I don't think is uh, a good look. Certainly isn't. No. Okay. no. Right. And move on. The page, can yeah. I move and second? Yeah. Have we saved the current yeah. problem? Yeah, seconded. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any items not on the agenda? There have been none. Is there any conflicts of interest to declare? No. There have been none. We move on to 1.5. Minutes for confirmation. Can we have a mover and a seconder that we receive the minutes, please? Move that. Yep, seconded. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Are there any discussion on those minutes? Are there any omissions, errors, or comments one would like to make? Recall it was a busy morning. Oh, <laughs> another way for <laughs> I have some comments later in the day on this. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, you being now? Mm -hmm. No. I can have all in favor. Aye. 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 Moving on, please. Just the public forum is such a lot. Spent. 2.1. Tyra Pownui Community Board Long Term Submission. Can we have a mover and second of Please. Move the report. Yep. That for the report. Thank you. Seconded. Must be some debate on this. Yep. Yes. Okay, so you've got the submission there as, as discussed at your workshop. Um, so now is the time to have further discussion, bring up any other items. Any, any further items that you want to put into that submission and have a broad discussion and then that will be the final submission that we will put in. I'm talking about the board submission or this submission? The board submission. This is it, the Tower Power Board submission. 2.1. 2.1, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Total land purchase and operating costs should be funded 
by a mass rally targeted rate right in the mass rally community trust. <coughs> Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, the next one was the issue three, which so from the South Community Call, issue three, the board chose not to make a comment on it. You still support that? Yep. Yes. That's from issue two, issue one, issue two, issue five. Yeah, well, three and four we should uh, make yeah. the issue no. four, saying the sale of land in Pongamata, the board chose not to make any comment on that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I don't want to get into Issue five, increasing costs of rubbish and recycling. So initiative one, the board, the summertime rubbish collection. So the board are submitting in favour of option one, reduce the frequency of rubbish collections at Bongata and Powernoid between Boxing Day and early February for, from three times a week to twice a week. And for initiative two, the Mathrani and Powernoid refuse transfer station, the board is submitting in favour of option one, no change, retain the Mathrani and Powernoid refuse transfer stations as they are. Absolutely. Mr. Lord agrees with both yep. initiatives. Okay, issue six. Fees and charges, getting visitors to pay for this year. Uh, Tyra Powder Community Board is uh, submitting in favour of option two, no change. Continue with our current mix of fees and charges and rates revenue to pay for facilities and services. The board also provides a comment that they do not support the annual bike permit charges increasing to $200, but do support an increase of the annual charges to $100. Well, it's actually not an increase, it's an instigation. We don't have one at the moment. Well, that, yeah, the Tyra Powder, yeah. And that's actually that's actually asking for a scrap. Um, <laughs> I don't know. We've got a. I don't. I don't see it as a scrap. I mean, we've got well, to get some income up. Was last time. Both ramps. No, that's fine. I was really that. There are charges in the rest of the country, and all the time has successfully done up for a number of years. Yeah. And um, yes. I think we agreed at a past um, meeting of the community board last year that when um, more of the had been finished, that we would implement charges. So I think you're saying we can do a paid rent at part two. <laughs> yes, we did. So we can capture you know, the total area, really. Yeah. Um, I've got a result of it. You know, we're going to use a paid item. Yeah. Okay, so you're all happy? Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, so there was some other feedback that we went through, the changes to the eyesight. So the community board supports the decision to no longer fund the teams and fifteen in our eyesight. Mm -hmm. uh, future of our rubbish and recycling. The board supports transitioning to early bins for curbside rubbish collection instead of buying blue bags and continuing to support our community resource recovery centres and introducing other recycling initiatives. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we go on to the CAPEX budget. Um, so, uh, number one, so you all in agreement that everything that was in the must do list is to be retained in that list? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, That's and the nice thing that I talked the meeting over the camp. And the nice to have, uh, the board would like to bring forward from the nice to have into the must do's the Manai Road Hub. Library. Yep. Um, the funding is and the funding is are just stay the same. Okay. Footpath construction. You wish to pull that from the nice to have into the must do's priority list. Yes, but can I say I think it's something that we can't do. But it's a matter of well-being too, and I do notice an increase of. Uh, wheelchairs and um, Disability. ride on so yeah. around Tyra, and I don't know whether we've got them that currently in place there. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, there's, there's a few disability scooters around there. So we need to keep that, those four cars up to hear from people going from time to time at Tyra. Um, there's a few areas that they have trouble getting the red king side of the closet. Yeah, so put half that down. Okay, street light improvements. Moving street light improvements for the nice to have and the must do's. Fresh our mind. Well, um, I need that. Picking up 
a number of areas to then finally do uh, culvert if required. If it's not required, then we don't need to do it. But based on what we saw in the last event, like I say, the uh, cross-sectional area that culvert was maxed out. Um, so yeah, so that's, where, that's where the numbers come from. Okay, we're finishing from bridging consent. Could you explain what that is that about the three, or? No, the re um, distributing of sand from the channel back onto the beaches. The consents are looking to expand that out, oh, make them a um, more um, material allowed to go on the beaches. Uh, um, Using the dredging from the choice. channel to replenish the beaches. Can you enlighten us a bit more on that? Um, can you repeat the question, please? <laughs> so that's the beach of nation from region consent. So Terry say that we were looking at extending the amount? They want to extend the amount of finishing or re on the beaches through the consent through WRC. Yeah. Um, and they were looking to uh, get support for that through the long-term plan. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what they want. Yeah, I haven't been involved in any of those discussions um, directly myself, but it sounds like that makes sense. Uh, I guess it all depends on the financials and how that would work out between regional council consent and, and us, um, and whether that material is suitable. So the don't consent that they would expand that, you know, yeah, use right. Right, and use that as their push ups and re yep. So I guess that would be a challenge of um, regional council consent potentially, if you're talking about is expanding it here, getting more volume um, off that consent to then be able to be used for the virtual management. But, um, yeah, and then I guess we need to have a consent that through the regional council for that metric management on volume, if that one's going to increase volume, that consent we have at the moment after a modest volume of sand um, push ups. And I think possibly, depending on the volumes, I don't know the details, we just need to look at the internet consent for that as well. Um, but any, anything's possible. I think it was mentioned in the plan that yeah. signals for the regional council for the intention. Mm. Yeah, so, it's not very place. adequate that they've got at the moment, eh? Really. Yeah. It'll be pretty small. 100 cubes or something. Yeah, and the thing is, is that you can do a small volume of sand mm. push ups, but if you want to do a large volume, then often you need to do a lot more work mm. to understand the impact on the environment. You know, whereas a small, small amount, the regional council might be happy to, um, to go with that, whereas if we say we've got to do much bigger, then we can kind of click into the next kind of category. Okay, well, now we need to understand what we're doing, but it's not going to have any adverse effects. You know? Staff sand from somewhere else, or all those kind of things. So um, it always ends up more complex than we'd like to think it is. Okay, so if there's nobody no, no else wants to add, have any more discussion, any more items that they want to add and have a discussion around on, the, on your submission? And I just want to make sure that and uh, you do want to speak at the hearings. Oh, yeah. Yep. Ken, John, okay. You wish to speak in <laughs> support of the board's submission? Yes, yes. <laughs> right. Um, part two, that we confirm the uh, board's submission. Can I, as the mover and seconder, happy to yep. include part two? So I'll put... The uh, part one and part two. And that would be you and Sam Barry. Chris and Barry. All right, happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Moving right along. 2.2. The work program. Mm. We have a mover and a second day. Page. We uh, the receive program. the Tara Tara Wit Program. Yep. Yep. Second. Yep. Discussion. This will be asked for the aided delegate. Sorry. You're not writing the report for a delegate. Yeah. This is we we and then it was forwarded to you. Right? No, we shared. Yeah. Or so you can just confirm that you receive the information if you like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do also add on um, your email online. So. Okay, well, we're going around the, around the table. 
Any discussion on the WIC program? Yep. <laughs> Just like an update on the Torres Gate Park legal challenge. Does somebody give us an update on that, please? Uh, so through, through the chair, there's no update at this stage that, that really can be given regarding that. So, um, yeah, I don't have any more information for you at this stage. Sorry. Is there a council briefing before it goes to court? Or oh, definitely. So, yeah, no, definitely um, at that stage. Um, I need to be able to be updated here. So, I think this is going to be able to provide an update um, to the um, Hopefully, later this week, actually. Um, so, yeah. So what are the implications? The skate park's got the money that's going to be deferred the job? Um, well, I, I wouldn't like to bring it that at this stage. Like I say, I'm, I'm happy to um, make sure that my project manager and our legal counsel will come back with an update um, via me later this week. I think it would be my intention at this stage, because actually there's a number of options with the, with the situation that presents itself. And, uh, and so, yeah, so that's, um, I understand you guys are really keen to know where things are going. But, um, <laughs> Well, we've got a thousand odd people <laughs> the other side of the river that are pretty keen too. Yeah, no, that's not lost on me at all. Um, no, I think we've had those thousand here at the community board. It was like so. Um, so no, we're not under any illusions around the um, the interest and the passion around getting the skate park done in Tyra. So, um, but we just need to make sure we've gone through the right the right steps and the right process and make sure we're happy with the information that we can come back to elect members. With the last thing we need to do is give you guys bad um, information. This week, we need to do a proper Very true. And the skate park has reached its part of the bargain from yep, sounds like it. Yeah. meeting. They have reached 150,000 plus. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, yep, and I think yes. that's the trouble now. It's the, 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 the broke people are uh, expecting things to start happening, and all of a sudden, we don't know what's going on. Yes, yeah, so the hands are tied, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So there was always a chance that, that this would happen. I think that first, first thing I ever said to Ross. Yeah. When so, he said we're going to do a skate park there, I said you're probably not. So you'll be one person that's not surprised then uh, yeah. about this. And me. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, let's just Thank go. Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Ross. Yeah. No, let's yeah, just move on. Let's move on. Let's get the yeah, yeah. yeah. in this thing. Mm. I'd just like to raise a question around the Pano we skate as uh, skate pole. Yes. Mm. Uh, there was a concern raised at the local rate payers mm -hmm. discussion about the cost of upgrading this when it's been ground. Yes. So, um, so what specifically is the question? The question was around the replacement. That was around the replacement project. Yeah. Replacing it. Yeah. Mm. So I think well, the, work, the work was that the work was it was done has been done, um, and you can see the cost in there. That's pretty much exact. That's what the cost will be. I go any more than that. Um, was around dealing with those urgent issues that yeah. the skate park had and grinding yeah. those um, the same thing. Mm -hmm. back. So, um, so yeah, it's not a whole hundred eight thousand uh, dollars project. It's, it's came down to that amount that you see in there, which is between thirty five and forty, I think it was. So the program is still to replace the bond. I think that's in the um, LTP. Mm -hmm. I just can't recall the year off the top of my head, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure it's in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in a, yeah. 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 So yeah, so and that's the intention of the stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is grinding the bowl, is that the end of that line, or is it just going to continue um, on on the program? It's just, I think it's going to continue on the program. So the, the grinding was really just to deal with the urgent issue. Um, and I mean, I guess that um, the board can make decisions on whether they want to kind of stretch out that, um, that bigger project than the LTP, or whether they have to look at where it is. And I just can't, I apologise, I can't recall off the top of my head where in the LTP that project is. It says to renew the existing skate bowl by resurfacing it. Yeah, so I think that's not renewing it. Uh, no, so, so I think initially what happened was that um, there was going to be budget this year and next year to do the renewal. And then when the costs came back in, they said, look, these are, this is much more expensive than what was initially thought. So let's deal with the urgent safety issues first, and then we'll actually relook at it as part of the LTP. I think that's how it ended up being a project of the LTP. So where does it fit now in the LTP? It, it actually looks quite good, too. Yeah. It does look good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, there was a figure in there, and I, I thought there was something like 600. It was mentioned yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 a little bit of concern. Yeah. Um, so the chair, mm. I have a question. If it's 495 through the chair, mm -hmm. um, and the 
long to in between, except she's probably one of the most theoriscate parts on this peninsula that have been completed given Wahiena, Monata, Thames, mm. and Peru, and Coromandel currently. Um, and 495? Yep. And also the other areas have all contributed yeah. money from the community, whereas as part of it going to be well, asked. Well, through the chair, that's a board decision. You know, if the board decide they want to do that, and what I would say is at 495, it's pretty similar to the 450 oh, that Tom yeah, yeah. yeah. So whilst it might be, you know, at this stage, you know, high level cost is 55k more expensive than the Toyota one. I think, I think it's in the realm of uh, what could be expected. I can't recall the cost off the top of my head of the thing you have to escape the park, but I think it's similar. Um, yeah. So it's pretty yeah, good, it was 650, so I think it's <laughs> Does that money include the taking away of this? Skateboard of, and then building, yeah, or just a building? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. To include the, to include yeah, the decommissioning and the demolishing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. So the cost of the demolishing at this point? Possibly, yeah, yeah, possibly. But like I say, you, with all these things as we talk about, I know it's challenging to not have a definitive answer, but you know, when you're early in the project, you've always got a high level of uncertainty around the costs, mm. and you don't get any really great level of detail and uncertainty until you've done the design, and even then, when you've gone out to the open market, it all depends on the contractors and how hungry they are for the work or how much other. We're really talking three, four years away too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, <laughs> so I think it, we would, my advice to you as a board would be don't get too half on the yeah. on five. Is that yeah. classed as a TCDC asset with um, depreciation? It would be, yeah. So there must be something in the in the big budget. Yeah, so there'll be so there'll be depreciation reserves that will be drawn on to help fund that project. Yeah. Um, and you know, usually projects are a mix of um, mix of funding sources, whether it's a re partly renewal, and partly an increasing level of service. Mm. And those funding will come from different sources. Might be depreciation reserves, might be new money from rates if you get if you're making that a bit bigger or a bit better. Mm. Is it not a like for like change? Uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Sorry, Terry. Um, I don't know if the board have been involved in any early discussions no. around the concept. Mm -hmm. or it's it's probably, probably too far out to actually get into that level of detail. So the yeah. depreciation funded if it was? If it was like for like, yeah, but I would suggest that things have moved along probably since that one was built as far as what they actually put in. Uh, if you look at some of the other parts, scan parts, and so I'd say that what they'll be doing is renewing it, but also bringing it up to kind of what is the current standard for those kind of things. So that we, I'm just guessing, you know, I would say it'll be a combination of renewals and, and um, so just asking a big hand in there. That's Terry's question. There, it's in the busters. Mm -hmm. Ninety-two thousand. Oh, I'm sorry. Four hundred ninety-two thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think the initial one was actually very extensively donated. Mm -hmm. Quite a great family. Mm. Did you want to talk about going to drive? Yeah, I just I added I you know, thank Jennifer. I, I sent um you know, having looked at the work program and there were three things. One was Gallagher Drive because um, there were some comments coming from right parts with Gallagher Drive. Um and um also the other two things I asked for were the rest of the reserve car park reasons. Yeah, the reserve car parks, which ones were being and I've got a lovely report back, thank you, on that, so we can see exactly what's been completed and what's about to be completed um, in the very long term mm. plan. Um, and Gallagher Drive, so that's good. And I'd like to know more about Gallagher Drive and also ask for a minute by minute update yep. um, from Ross and, and he sent a wonderful report getting us right up to date on PP and I think it's good to share that out there sure. because with lots of comments from the public over yeah. on what what it is and what it isn't and costs and signs and how to find their way to the current toilets and well, yeah. Better in mind, it? Mm. Yes. I mean um, there was a stage where the the, the concept had fallen right. off the fence. Now it's back up there. Now people yeah. can't see that and actually read it and understand. Uh, and it was out there for the public yes. months ago, so I really don't know why we're fielding questions about Yes, that. I realise that, right, but we are there to represent um, our 
um, my piles in every residence, and if I ask the students, here's any cuts, we will go on to. Yeah, there might be, through the chair, there might be something, um, and I'll put it in my Natasha's space here, the columns where we might have actually sent an update out that you can maybe refer them to, you know, yeah. online, you know, because we would have mm -hmm. sent updates out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Natasha specifically, but the comms team mm -hmm. um, that we can, you know, maybe send a link to a person and say, here's the update that shows that concept plan again, you know, rather than have to keep going over and over it. It's like, here's information. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, that ga ga Gallagher Drive business is not a lot better, I'm going to say. Okay. Um, I have spoken to, is it Brent from Pinnacle? Yes, Brent Two or three times. He's been out two or three times. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been now that I know that just knocked off at lunchtime and went home. Um, <laughs> didn't, didn't appear to be a particular reason. Yeah, I've still got a third of the well, a quarter of about a quarter of the dig out to do. Mm. Um, it's just the slowest moving bloody job I've ever seen. Yeah, um, it's just not. And the residents up there aren't happy. I mean, yeah. it's left in a rough condition. There's bloody hundred mil bloody rocks laying on the road. Mm. It's just bloody awful. You know, it's very disruptive. I did take a drive there uh, from Donna up there for a site visit and after we had the weekend meeting in Toronto. Yeah. Last, <laughs> weekend before last. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a rough, um, it is a big job, that whole, yeah. that whole kind of milling. They, they run into it's some uh, real problems around there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not ideal. Like, I mean, uh, we'd love it to go a lot smoother yeah. and quicker and faster, all of us. So I hear what you're saying, Chris. I did have a nice email from, um, from I think it might have been, she was last week, so yeah. there was a lot more people on site. Things seem to be yeah. starting to move a bit faster, so that's just we haven't slipped back again. But um, a lot more people on site. They were people putting renewing water mains and things like that yeah. under the road, which well, it has to yeah. I understand what you're saying, but it always they're not roading gangs. No, but it all has to be done to enable yeah. to move forward. So yeah. I mean, right, you know, even when it was subdivided, I mean, the subdivide the developer there pushed trees. Yeah. All sorts of rubble to form that road, and it was a swamp. Yeah. And now that it's coming home to roost, you know, they've dug, they, you know, they've had yeah. a hell of a problem. You know, it's often it does happen. We have some roads in Philly, and we've, we've done that as well in the last few years where we've gone in and they were, were similar to that. Yeah. Been well, this is the third time this road's been done since yeah. I've lived in Toronto. Yeah, and it is a bit, you know, possibly it does come back to what you're saying. Warren, oh, yeah. That, you know, you first start off, if you don't get it right to start with, you're just chasing your tail every time then, you know, instead of... Windsor Drive, Windsor Drive, where, that, where you turn off to go into Windsor Drive. Yes. That was all part of the swamp. Yeah. And we've got houses sitting on there. Mm -hmm. Gee, well, I tell you what. Yes. <laughs> Through the chair, I also note in the report that um, we were sent, um, that SHIP um, had given up the regular meetings that they were having with residents. Yeah. Because nobody had been turning up. Right. Now, I also note through the chair that SHIP um, is actually a very reputable company and is fully aware of things like swamp and subdivisions that have been all munched in. So I'm sure they've got the qualifications to pass. Thank you. Yeah. The guys they've got on the job is their first writing job, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> the yes, gang. The, yeah, the two guys. At the top, the CEO and the other people are very highly qualified. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just another one. The last one, um, Chris. Mm -hmm. Royal Billy Point. Yes. It was a quarter billion dollar um, budget request or outside budget request. Yes. So it's pretty tight, that money. I see that Heritage New Zealand is connected to it. Yes. Have you had any indication of what they want and how much that could affect that? Affect that? Um, so I understand you think everything's moving as it as it needs to with that project now, and that everything's um, done what we need to what we need to do, subject to just getting the work done, waiting to after Easter to get stuck into it. So um, I don't know all the details, but I understand that everything got done that needed to get done with Heritage New Zealand. Apparently, they've got to be on site again. Yes, so so often through the chair, often they they will want to be on site and on what's found in the discovery phase, or whatever. Yes. You know, then they often say. We have someone here for certain phases of the project. Um, so yeah, which is just the way, just the way it works now. Yeah. Um, how do you mitigate that? Last, I think, sixty grand last time that cost for the blowout. So, so it's, a, it's, it's a, just a, in the budget. Yeah, so it's pretty, um, so it's pretty unknown 
and how to mitigate these things as far as apart from putting a, a really large contingency into your project up front with the other, you know, to try and deal with any of that uncertainty. Um, but obviously we've done the main part of the project, so I don't anticipate this cost being subject to the same kind of um, pressures that the first phase was for the Heritage New Zealand stuff. Um, but you know, your question's a good one, Jerry. You know, it is very challenging to budget for all this stuff at the beginning of the project, you know, because you either you either put in something you think is reasonable and then something that's not enough, or you put in a huge amount and something like says that's way too expensive, you can't afford to do that project and you don't even keep going. So it's a it's a bit of a juggling act to try and work out what a appropriate contingency is for these yeah. things. Historically, we got caught here, didn't we, with heritage? Yeah, we did. We did, and I, I think you know, we've had the um, Heritage New Zealand people come through and spend quite a lot of time with our project managers mm -hmm. around this type of project heading forwards uh, to provide some clarity. And I have to say, there's not a lot of clarity apart from mm -hmm. just expected on any project, pretty much. That's the clarity that I've talked about. Mm -hmm. so it does make it a little bit, little bit challenging to budget and plan for these projects, but it's just part of the job. Mm -hmm. to take. Mm -hmm. Certainly, be nice to see it all finished. And then we can start on back here. All right, we need a. Uh, so really, we need to move in a second. Have um, we received the work program? We've had the discussion. Is there any further discussion? In favour? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. 3.1. Good morning, everybody. Oh, hello, Nicole. <laughs> hello, it's everybody. Good. Right. You're going to give us an update. Uh, just the next step in the process with the uh, classification of the, the library site. Um, we had one submission, which was from the Heritage Society and support. Uh, apart from that, we are all ready to recommend to council if you approve. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is a slow process. Um, so we need to move in a second that we receive part one. We do classification. Can I have a move in a second, please? Yeah. Um, so any questions? Um, going around the table here. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned the Sanitary Society, whatever they are, keep cropping up here, there, and everywhere, always adding on to things, you know, and taking away space from the library for a start. You know, we're looking at putting an extension on the side of the library. Yes, that's what I'm only taking space there, and this, and that, and the other. Can we get a final plan off? Well, well this has been. <laughs> months, mm. yeah, months in the planning, and we're not even in the planning design stage. We're just trying to get it. Uh, as it says, we're trying to get the classification changed so we can get. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could spread it out to the campground a bit, but it's, it's a well. There's a long history there. Uh, we were looking at a boundary taking change. some land, but. Um, People in Tyra apparently wanted to retain a campground. There's a lot of history here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, cold, but, yeah it's, it's very disjointed what's going on. Well, so. What we find there is a tea, but you've got here. Exactly. Yeah. Just like this. Yeah. Very good one. Mm. It's achievable. They want to go out and fundraise. Once we get the classification changed, they want to go out and raise some money. Yeah. Heritage Group have done an extensive fundraising and it has taken a long process and so it yes. makes it like a hard time. I ask a question mm -hmm. for the Chair. The question I've got in our suggested resolutions exercises the delegated power of the Minister of Conservation to approval the change in classification. Has the power of approval been passed on the Minister of Conservation to somebody within TCDC. It's the approve, it's the revision. It says exercise of delegated power. Yeah. Yeah. Three, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, John. Chairman, the, the Minister of Conservation has given that delegated power to the full council 
um, and other councils as well. So it's not an officer or a board delegation, it's a delegation to the council. So um, by passing that second resolution there or the council passing that, it's just saying that it is exercising the power that has been delegated by the Minister of Conservation to approve the change in classification. Zach will cut time down too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just down. Yeah. Any further discussion? So the original mover and seconder. They're also happy with part two. Yeah. They recommend it. All happy there? Yeah. Yes, yeah. perfect. In favour? Aye. Aye. Yeah. One against. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. And That's all right. I've got the next one up as well. All right. The power code, 3.2. Remember, move up and move back. Thank you. Checking it. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. So I take it as read that um, power code have come to council to get an easement over part of the entrance to Kennedy Park. Yeah. I, I had a look at it yesterday and I've got no problem about what they're trying to do. But I noticed there was a lot of tree uh, roots around there, so you're going to have a few problems, perhaps, maybe. But I think the area of now is the transformers are located on the ground, they seem to be far more operationally effective. <coughs> yeah. And um, yeah, they're not an eyesore, but uh, the cost of the power scheme seems to be. An advantage for sure. As long as they let the there's only one neighbour what's backing on to it, let, I take it they're going to inform them what's going on for them. Mm -hmm. Correct. Nicole. Sorry, sorry. Has there been some consultation with their neighbours? Not that I'm aware of. You need, you need to consult them. They do, they do consult them. Mm, they do. That's right there. Yeah. I've done that all the time. So, and the new technology is um, better than that. We've been to a few meetings, haven't we? Yeah. Is there any further discussion on that? Yeah. Improved service around the place, though. Isn't it? Yeah, I would imagine so. Thank you, sir. Thanks. 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 Move and second are happy with it. Motion there? Yep. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Yep. That's a positive left to ask. No. Oh. Hey. They seem to be sticking where they want. Planning. They're doing the funny land and the city land. The Paul's Road. Oh, no. I've only got, um, can we have a move and second and we receive the proposed um, road name? On Paul's right? Yes. Move it. Yep. Yeah. I got one comment. We've already got a Ridge Road in Tyra. Would there be. Yeah, they. Well, normally come up with the second option. There's no second option. Well, there was three. There was three. Um, oh, these other ones down here. Copy Ridge. Oh, yeah. Corey and Ridge. Yeah. I just, I mean, I, I, I have a son that's posted over, over there in Tyra, and uh, mm. we have, from time to time, <laughs> major problems with some of the addresses on the, on the mail. And I just think that Ridge Road, <coughs> are we going to have a problem? And I, it's outside the. Uh, it's on rural delivery, obviously, up there. And I'm just, that's the only comment I've got. I mean, otherwise, didn't, I don't get any. Uh, didn't they want to call it North Ridge Road, I think? Yeah. Or just the fact that it's got the ridge in it. Corroo mm. Rise. Corroo Rise. preferred option is for a ridge rise, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I have that's one. Other it's not coming through. I'm going to try to. I explain the comment. Oh, it's, mm. Come back to Brighton. Mine will be going everywhere. Could I just be. Corrie Rice. Corrie Rice. Corrie Rice. Corrie Rice. Yep. On the ridge. Arrow. Yes. 
Corey Rice, is it? Mm. Oh, I love it, Richard. I don't know. The confusion. Yes. Yep. Some, yeah. like so Corey Rice. Corey Rice. Corey So we have a recommendation that we we recommend Corey Rice. Yep. Mm. Yep. A little bit. Rather than the corn and rice. That's nice. Sweet pie. I'll move that. Uh, this is an amendment. An original mover and seconder. Yeah. All happy with that? Yeah. Put it. Mm -hmm. All in favour? Aye. 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 Okay. 5.1. Action schedule. Mm. Action schedule. Mm. Um. Somebody just gives an update on the hogging part. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a long-winded long project for some reason. What's the problem with that? We were invited to the meeting, which is, um, I think, the rate right payers have asked for it. And the meetings was a shoreline management. People were jumping for a coastal management person. And um, Tina, um, Patrick, the um, planting person, um, and you know, Beach here and Beach here coming in as well and have an update. I think they've all been invited, haven't we? There seems, yeah. seems so to be a bit of angst about it, is there? I don't know. What's, What's the problem with it? It's just a hogging path, I thought. Is I thought we got a, somebody got a meeting to rain spoils. Yeah, there is a meeting, 3rd of April. Yeah. 3rd of April. Yeah, the uh, <coughs> okay, right. Here in the club. <laughs> In the club. time at the club. Yeah. Yes. Um, no time was put on the. Oh, through the G. I don't know what time. I'm sorry. No, oh. I can't make it. But um, I've got three staff who are going on Easter Saturday. It's at two, it's at two p.m. It's at two p.m. Yeah. So I think I think the and I don't have all the details, but I believe the discussion around the hogging path is the location of it. You know, if it's right up on the highest point, or if it's set back slightly back and land slightly, just about where it is. You know, I believe that's the I believe that's the main issue. Um, I'd like so to see it meander around a little bit as well. Oh, you have to turn up to Saturday's meeting. Yeah. <laughs> see if you can get to it. Um, I think Anna knows a bit more about it. Yeah. I had a concern that was raised by the rate payers was not just the location. They don't want it too close to the houses, but more towards the Jones. And also more information about the timeline and cost. Because it said that it's only going to be done 20 metres a year. Mm, Staged, which is going to be staged. Yes. So, more information how much yeah. is it going to cost? How long is it going to take? And we need more information about the maintenance of the current user. So, those are the maintenance. Yeah, so and how wide? And width. So, we've invited Jamie mm -hmm. and Tanya, they're mm -hmm. coming and organising it with them on a Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So it's Easter Saturday at what time? 2pm 2 2 2 in the southern, two o'clock, southern room of the club. You could be with a bit fiery, do you think? Who's shouting the bar? Down to me. Who's shouting the bar? Down to me. Easter Saturday. Yeah. yeah. I'll get a good crowd. Right. Hopefully. <laughs> We've got to get the word out there, that's the thing. Just through the chair again, can I have a question maybe of Anna or Bruce? Um, how many has got a vegetation plan or a... Um, is it true? What do you mean by vegetation? Well, like planting and... Um, I don't know if it's a beach restoration plan or something like that. There's a plan somewhere that they mentioned that they have. You know, About the dunes or yeah. just everywhere? Everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So who does that? Who put that so together? that's a spreadsheet that's been put together by the Pānui Ratepayers Association right. with Derek's team. Yeah. So Derek's team is working through that right. with them. Okay. I think the desire for uh, Fondman Car to engage in a plan, and I think Tanya was keen to get involved, but I didn't know how it was all structured. So, so it's through the chair, is that specifically around the or the whole of In general, wasn't it? No, it was the whole of 
the whole of the stand is the June planning coordinator, so she wouldn't get involved yes. in anything that's not June. Yeah, she would really, the beach. She really the beach in June, a little bit of reserve Pretty stuff, but you know, getting moving back into town, that wouldn't be her area. But someone else in the director's team might work through that. What time is that? Um, so, yeah, so it's tree tree covers, tree removals, trees planting. Reserve maintenance. Hey. There's a whole list of things. Oh, for each other. Okay, very much. Okay, so we set them on with red pants. Good. We had a part there which. Um, because. Yeah. The public form. Yeah. We'll be handled by staff. Great. Yeah. 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 Promotion event of 
Paula, the Council of Paula uh, and Hollis, um, in the spelling. And um, I've got three briefs, a fundraising motion group, not just to come to council for money, but to go and take um, wealthy entrepreneurs or get money from other sources too, because there's plenty of money coming through under wellbeing projects. Also to promote artists, and it's not just painting artists, it's right across um, playwrights, music, authors, a whole thing. And um, also um, to promote young artists. There's a number of young artists in our valley showing skill, but not the money to be able to do things. So that's the brief of that group. Twelve really neat people who in themselves are well, um, you know, well recognised in the artistic field too. And Paul Schroeder from Kalaui, um, who's an excellent photographer. And we have Paula McNeil, who's got international um, fame as a printmaker. And Yvonne Walms, who chairs it, and so does and Jeff Bolley, as secretary, just moved up, and they got to start the original one with Han Collective back in 1998. Um, there's a number of groups in our community over at Tyra, and I presume Helen is the same, who are doing incredible fundraising through different wellbeing activities. Um, we had um, the Joe Seeger event, which was fundraising for the skate park. And that was organised by John Brooke and Andrea um, Johnson, and it raised, I think it was $5,000, which is, you know, you hear Joe Seeger speak, and um, she cooks, and people go, Seeger, and their tickets um, for the donation. Um, we also had the Woody Anna Skate Park who practiced and had an event last weekend, I think it was, or the weekend before, and fundraised for the Skate Park group. And Tyra, through the doors are coming up, and they've also got a fundraising as well. And we had a book launch um, by Jenny Healy, who had done a work with a school group over, you know, it was over the COVID period with photographs which are available at the Info Centre and the $10 a book goes to um, one of the amazing projects. So there's a lot happening. People are looking at their own amazing activities too. Um, and next week I attend a webinar, webinar doubt, but a quick local government of New Zealand having a webinar on reports for all community board members or councillors. And, you know, it's good learning. It's what we should be asking for from our community, from our council staff, and how to do it, and how to do our own reports. And that's all I've got to say for me. Yeah. Okay. Going into the more creative period at the moment. Uh, yeah, I just encourage people to read the LP, uh, TP consultation document and have their say. It's an important time and uh, we want to hear their voice. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, been fielding, I would say, quite a lot of thanks about Gallagher Drive for a start. Um, also, there was a, apparently an article in the paper, and I'd like to verify if it's right or wrong that the Pippi Bridge replacement was going to be a like for like. <clears throat> so are they planning on putting a one lane bridge in? I wouldn't guarantee you're going to get a two lane bridge. Okay, well it just came up on the weekend. Oh, it's a letter from the Minister of Transport and the new Minister of Transport and the Minister of Finance and from Wayne Field, who's head of New Zealand NZTA. And that letter clearly states what NZTA national priority is and what they hope to do. And yes, they are going to 
approach everyone wants us to talk on one way, but you're a two-way approach. We have the writing manager online again. Maybe he can. And I know the council update. signed something with the ZPA in December, the rationale plan. But does that make 20 years away? Right. <laughs> can, can we listen to our writing manager? This is Ed Barley. Yeah. Yeah. Ed, you've got the chair. Thank you. Good morning, all. Um, I suspected this might come up, so I've been uh, hanging around. I'm actually going to a workshop this Thursday afternoon with NZTA and their Bridge uh, Asset Management and Design Team in Hamilton. At this moment, my understanding is that they have not made a final decision on the form of the bridge whether it will be a single lane, whether it will be a two lane replacement. Um, I've already put a submission to them asking for two lanes with a footpath cycleway on either side. This mirrors the uh, presentation that went to the board uh, from the local community group at the, the previous uh, board meeting. Um, that's what we're looking for. Um, but at this moment in time, my understanding is no final decision has been made. Do, do you have a, any idea, of, uh, an update on the baby, on the one south of Tauru? Um, I've got no update on that. It's not in their uh, transport plan for replacement, but I understand it is in for surface uh, renewal, so that would be taking out the, the bumps that are in the, the asphalt surface at the moment. But as I say, no plans for its replacement, either as a, a new single lane bridge or a, a two lane bridge. Similar situation for the one north of Tauru as well. I think there's some concern over from what I've been hearing about the Bailey is that they're going to shut it for several days and divert traffic around through Kent's coast. Right. Can you, can you enlighten us on that? Yes, I can. There is a, a lot of rumours going around around that being shut. The actual um, detail on that one, which I spoke to the structures engineer of the, the council on Friday afternoon about, is that they are planning possibly 10 one night closures so any works will be undertaken at night um, when there's obviously a lot less traffic this hasn't been confirmed yet um, what they believe has happened is that someone from the press got hold of a worst case scenario should we say uh, didn't fully read it and then assumed that the the road was going to be shut for 10 days. The actual the actuality is they are discussing 10 one night closures. That has not been confirmed at this moment. Terry Walker here. Uh, Ed, they talked about this uh, Pepe Bridge in, by 2023. Is the timing still there or is it still is that under discussion as well? Uh, my understanding is it's still in for 2023. Um, looking at the their funding for it, it looks as though they've put forward funding for 2021-22 for detailed investigation, potentially for design as well. And then there's additional funding um, in TO that would seem to mirror construction being 22, 23, 23, 24. So one year for design and uh, business cases, two years potentially for building. I can't. Uh, there's any chance of getting an IQ test done to these idiots? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk to the idiots on Thursday to find out what they're who are. Yeah. Um, Ed, I presume that you have seen all of the. Reports from Vika under the Official Information Act for PP. I have, yes. Yeah. And that's not good, is it? Um, I have to say I would have concerns about the bridge. Um, 
but what the transport agency appear to be doing is managing their risk on the bridge um, by doing regular inspections and basically going as quickly as they can for full replacement. The problem they would have is if they went straight for replacement without um, looking into the detailed business case, they would have to go for a like-for-like -like replacement. The process they're going for with a detailed business case allows them to consider options and alternatives, which would include the two-lane bridge. Is there any chance that you can bring up to the, the possibility of having a long-term plan to get rid of all the one-way bridges throughout the Coromandel? I can a, bring... It's a no I brain. I can certainly discuss it with them. I think they're, they're going to suffer from the same budget restrictions that we are um, over the, the future. But yes, I do understand that they have got some... They certainly know that we are pressing for the replacement of all one-way bridges with two-lane. That's something that I've been stressing to them since, since I've been discussing uh, Pepe Lane, um, Pepe Road rather, but it is up to them, unfortunately. We can keep applying pressure and we will do. Tell them to talk to Jacinda. Eat their own side. <laughs> Eat. Junkie. Mm. The letter that we have, which I have given to the community board by the Lane and Pateri, and every other man and his dog, um, the letter from Wayne Oakby does say that they're also looking at the realignment of Graham's Creek Bridge and Waiwara Bridge. And Waiwara Bridge is something changed, and according to official information papers, it too is starting to exhibit cracks. <laughs> and, okay. I, you know, I'm sorry. My yep. Well, I'll carry on then. Yeah. Um, the other one that I fielded the other day was um, concerned about the um, everyone's favourite Peter Carver tree in Paku Drive. Oh. Um, fish, fishing club people have put it down and it's becoming a, a health and safety thing now. Um, they've identified it as people getting almost hit. So I think we need to do something about it. And I mean, you can't have... Um, a small group of people holding us to ransom, I don't think. I mean, the tree, we could plant two or three other trees there off the road, but that needs to come out and have a footpath put through there. All right, I'll just threw that one in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw some smiles. Yes. Yeah. Just through the chair, and I've got a bit of power tree. But just going back to um, the bridges, so he gave me quite a lot of good information there. Yes. I just wanted to confirm that you're aware that the 10. One night closures, they're looking at the Pepe Bridge, not the oh, not right. Hawaii Bridge. That's so we, right. we don't know about the Bailey Bridge at Hawaii. We haven't heard about that. We've heard the rumours as well about a 15 day closure and all the rest of it. So we're trying to find that out as much information as we can, but we don't have any more information at this time on that. Yeah. I just wanted to confirm that you didn't you know, get them at the two next oh. ups and the, the, the one, one night closure, 10 one night closures is Pepe Bridge. I think what are they going to do to that? Well, I presume that picking up on what Ed said. There's a number of urgent things that they want to do just to uh, yeah. keep the maintenance going on that bridge while they work through the future replacement options. Of it. Yeah, well, you'd agree with the state of the Bailey is no. quite tough. Uh, yeah, well, as soon, as soon as we find anything out, we'll let you yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, okay. Bruce, if, if I may, through the chair, I've got an update to my update to you from this morning. The, the 10 one night closures are for the Bailey Bridge. Oh, that's okay. confirmed for, and that is for surfacing replacement. They are also looking at one night closures for Pepe Road Bridge to do investigations in advance of the the design work. So there's confusion about which bridge, even sorry, which bridge they're talking about, even within the, the transport agency. But the 10 one night closures are intended for the, the single lane Bailey Bridge. Why don't we build a single lane bridge alongside the, the one that's there now? And once that's opened, use that while you modernise the other one and join them together. That's a, that's a huge problem. job. You've got to realign the road, right. both, in, both sides of the road, and then you can use it for the bridge. You've got to have a bunch of that's a humongous job. So it's 
it's not going to be something that uh, oh, yeah. will take like no, oh crap, no, but they've got, you've got to get rid of one way bridges. End of story. And it's what you put on to the nation of yeah. mm -hmm. because it's black white. Yeah, how are you Chris? Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's me pretty much. I came out to the, uh, mm -hmm. to the, I went to the meeting at the Hall of Tyra um, with Sandra and, and Co. Yeah. And that's kind of about it. But that, that Pudakawa tree is one that's rearing its head more and more often. Um, Oh, we need to do something about that. I'll, I'll leave it in your hands, mate. <laughs> I, I, hey, hey, it's just the Parku Bay Preservation Society is saying it's got to stay there. Um, it's a sacred tree. It's it's only only been there about sixty or seventy years. It's a wooden one. So yeah, yeah, it's it's um it's, the old it's been on it. our um uh several boards have had this committed to them and. Right, skate park, we've yet to resolve it. Well, well so when somebody gets skittled as they drive around there... I understand um, that then something will happen. That something will happen, and, mm. and somebody, but somebody will probably be dead. So okay. that needs, it needs addressing. See you later. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, me, along with Anne, I sit on the... Um, sit on, on the sit in on the heritage meetings... And, Full committee and information centre. I hear Anne referred to our resident ratepass meetings, and yeah, we seem to have got out of step. So between myself and Chris and Anne, we, we need to we need to get our roster organised again. Yeah. Over here at Paranui, I think the, the local resident ratepass over here have to realise that Barry is the representative over here, and, uh, and you know they just got to establish some sort of Rapport with you, Barry, and, and get on with it. Uh, really. All right. I'm just saying the resident ratepayers associate over here yeah. need to get into bed with Barry, and, and uh, the, that's uh, their link. Yeah, we're getting there. You're getting there, good. Yep. And before I move on, I'd like to reflect on the public forum section of our last board meeting. Some of the conduct expressed was, I believe, is unacceptable to me personally and to the members of the board as a whole. Sure, at times, over the last few months, we've all seen... At times, over the last few months, we've all, as board members, been beset with frustration at the proceedings. Well, at the same time, we've all been subjected to abuse and being accused of impartiality. Currently, at our state facility is subject to a judicial, a judicial review. Let me just say that I firmly believe that our board has been working very hard to reach an agreement. And this board is reliant on information, advice and direction from council staff to assist us when debating and deciding on matters affecting our communities. I firmly believe we as a board are endeavouring to serve our community to the best of our ability and with integrity and transparency. And in closing, may I say that those persons who you have referred to are better than that. And it just remains that once a decision is published, we as a board, along with our community, can accomplish, hopefully accomplish, what previous boards have been unable to achieve. Uh, you just cast your minds back to, to that meeting, and I think some of the things that were, for me personally, to be eyeballed, uh, and the, and just, I think their actions were, were um, you know, just... It was abysmal, you know, right? Just, it was bloody just, abysmal. Yeah, an insult to, to us. I mean, we all live in the same committee, um, so the sooner we, we can get patched up and, and move on, the better. I thought that our past chair, Bob Winton's comments with reference to workshops, he knows very well why we have workshops and the value of them. There's nothing secret about it. It just gives us a chance to talk about things um, and come. We, we don't make a we're not allowed to make a resolution or pass any motions on those during those workshops. But I just um, I just found it all a little bit distasteful. And I hope we don't see a repetition. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you need a look.
Not me. Oh, have I missed you? Yeah, that you missed you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit of a re refit of something. The um, I met with John Courtney and Law, Lorna, Laura, isn't it? Laura. Yeah, it's obviously. Lorna. Lorna, Lorna. sorry. Mm -hmm. Regarding Royal Valley Point proposal, Dalton Fishing Club. So we went through this, she's up to date with what's required as regards that. I attended a uh, Shoreline protection management plan at Wonga Pro, at Wonga Protect. <laughs> and the one way bridges came up there because they had a representative from the NZTA there. And the one way bridges again came up there. <coughs> I had a, a one of the residents uh, contact me regarding the Holland Close. Pond, not nothing to do with the old clubs, like just the old clubs, pipe pond, whatever. And I've been <coughs> with that person a couple of times, and uh, uh, Lou Macwell is now involved to a degree. And uh, so that's early days for that one at the moment. <coughs> and with this tsunami alarms, I had several approaches, quite angry people mm -hmm. and quite understandably under you as well, regarding the tsunami lands. So it's good to see we're having a response regarding that. Attended a ratepayers committee meeting on March the 22nd. And uh, so hopefully that'll be making progress there. <coughs> and attended the meeting what the mayor had down here regarding um, Various things and whatever. Very poorly attended, I thought. But uh, and it was a bit of a no show. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. So, other than that, just, uh, say I had a look at the Vista Pack and the, with that uh, power coat on deck there. Can't see any problem with that other than the, some of the getting touched with the one neighbour, let them know what's going on, and also they got other they have trouble with the tree roots, that's their problem. Yeah. Uh, that, that's me. Thank you. Can we have a move and second that we receive the members reports, please? Yes. Yep. Can we get a second? Yep. Thank you. All in favour?